Most of the women that we know about in the 16th and 17th centuries are elite women because some 95% of women couldn't read or write, which means that they don't leave any letters or diaries or notebooks where they've jotted down their thoughts. We don't have that kind of autobiographical information about them. And they also tended not to own enough to necessarily leave a will. Um, they uh, weren't considered to be legally capable once they were married, so they don't appear before criminal courts. Ecclesiastical courts tend to be better, but for France, for example, we have a great gap in the sources between 1540 and 1667. As far as I know, there are no uh, ecclesiastical tribunals that survive for that time for the Catholic Church. So we don't get women's testimonies. And the sort of sources that we do have might tell us about the structure of women's lives, but they don't tell us about their behaviour and their mentalities. And that means that most women who ever lived have left no record to posterity. And that when we come across a set of sources like this that are packed full with women's testimonies, they're so valuable because they give us an insight into the lives of these people who would otherwise be lost to history completely. I decided to focus on the Languedoc because of where the sources survived. So we have very few sources to investigate the lives of ordinary women at this period of time. But my former doctoral supervisor, Robin Briggs, um, years and years ago, uh, as a great expert on 16th and 17th century France and women and witchcraft, had a hunch that these records of the Protestant church might be useful for looking into the lives of ordinary people. And so I went where they survived. So they survived in a massive run in a place called Nîmes in the, in the south of France. And um, there are some in uh, Montebon, which is a town which is uh, further west, and in little towns in between. In fact, I looked at far more towns that I've included in this study. I've used in the end 10 towns and cities. And I went where they were best. So Nîmes has this extraordinary run of records that survived from 1561. Um, stops in 63, picks up again in 75, all the way through to 1685. And I use them up to 1615 because they start to tail off in terms of usefulness after that point. But we've got this incredible series where we can follow cases through. Montebon has a register from 1595 to 98 looking into the lives of people there. Now, if all the Montebon ones had survived, we'd be in heaven as historians because they're so good, they're so rich in the stories they tell about ordinary people. But they don't. We've just got this with this one thing of three years, but it's a big, chunky old one. And so it was, it was really following the evidence to try and find out more about ordinary women and um, what went on, what they thought, um, how they behaved and, and their mentalities. There are quite a few of the findings in this work that will revolutionise how we think about women who lived 400 or 500 years ago.